Here we go. All right, we are live. Video feeds coming in nicely. All right, well, good evening, everyone. West Coast people, early evening. East Coast people, late evening. Let's go ahead and hit that mute button. All right, well, we all know why we are here tonight. It is about the air answers. Yes, for those of you close to me, you know that I've been holding on to this puppy for couple of weeks now, I'd say, probably since uh, Jarrett Steer's podcast that we did. So it's been a hot minute now. Might even might even been longer than a couple of weeks. But nonetheless, um, today is the day. Finally, I've been talking to Rachel about this for some time. I uh, didn't want it to be endless promises. So here we go. We have got our lovely Air Answers box in front of us. For those of you that don't know, I did include in the description of this video little bit of information about air answers. Uh, what this is in a nutshell is this is a mold testing device, um, just like you would have a spore trap sample or a, uh, a tape lift sample or even a swab sample if we were doing surface sampling. In this case, this is going to be the biggest competitor to what we commonly refer to as air samples or spore trap samples. So what this device does and how it differs is as opposed to the short-term snapshot type sample where we as an indoor environmental professional will walk out to a given property, we'll step foot in this property, we'll go through and uh, develop what's known as a sampling plan and determine where we are going to collect these samples. Next thing that we do, and of course I don't have them in front of me, they're in the car, is we would pull out our bioaerosol pumps and then that's what we would use to collect most commonly either a five or a 10 minute spore trap sample. That's gonna be with those little cassettes, the spore trap meaning the spores go into it, they get trapped on that, uh, that adhesive pad for lack of a technical better word there, and then that gets sent off to a laboratory where it can be analyzed. So we've used that for many, many, many moons, and now we have some advancement in technology. Air Answers is not, I have personally not used it, I have maybe opened the box before the video, but the seal's on this side, so you'll never know about it. Let's find out what's inside of it. So let's get a better camera angle here. How about that one? That one looks excellent. So air answers, unboxing, let's go. All right, so opening this puppy up, First thing that we're going to notice here is we've got some protective packaging, some bubble wrap, which I know my daughter will enjoy this, so I'm going to save this for her for a little bit later. I believe she is tuning in, watching live. Big shout out to Leilani Castano. Inside of here, let's see, we've got our packaging. We've got the creme de la creme air answers in the flesh. Why don't we actually try putting this on camera? Let's get a little better camera view here, shall we? How's that? There we go. All right, so we've got our actual air answers device. I'm gonna pull that out, set it off to the side here. Inside of here, it looks like we've got a couple of their sample media that they include. Obviously, this is different than what I'm used to and probably quite a few of you out there. Let's go ahead and set that off to the side. Oh, look at that. They were kind enough to include two return air labels. Now, I'm not sure if this was an IAQ Josh exclusive, so if it was, you might not get these, but I'm sure if you asked Rachel and the team nicely, they'll probably throw a couple of these in there for you. And then digging deep here at the bottom of the box, we have got our super exclusive knot. Uh, AC adapter. So this looks like this is obviously going to power this device. And other than that, we've got nothing else inside of the box, but, 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 but we did forget about one item, which is going to be the lovely folder that they were kind enough to send along here. And again, with these crappy angles, come on, Josh, you'd think you've done this before, but maybe not. So anyway, We've got this lovely Air Answers folder. Let's set this stuff off to the side. Let's open this puppy up. Inside of here, we've got a couple of items first and foremost. It looks like we've got a little introduction 
piece of cardstock here comparing oh, air answers to spore traps. It's like they knew. Anyway, we've got um, this, let's call it a comparative sheet between the two. Uh, then it looks like probably something that you might not have received pre September 1st, 2022, a product operation update. So I'm sure this is important. So let's make sure that we don't read this. Not uh, Air Answers Quick Start Guide. Uh, it's got a little QR code. We'll go ahead and scan that, check that out, see what that takes us to. But nonetheless, on the backside here, getting started with your Air Answers device. So this so far is actually pretty dummy proof, which I'm really excited for because so many things nowadays come out and you don't know how the heck to even turn the thing on, let alone to get things started here. Uh, let's see, we've also got, what is the Air Answer sampling device? So let's go ahead and read this first, just to kind of build some of the anticipation here since we kind of backloaded everything and opened the box before anything else. Let's switch camera here, there's a nice view of yours truly. So reading this little uh, handout that they've got, what is the Air Answers air sampling device? So this is their words, not mine. Air Answers takes innovative electrokinetic capture air sampling technology and turns it into an easy to use device that allows you to monitor your customer's home for a multitude of molds and allergens to address all of their health and property concerns by simply plugging it in and letting it capture the air all in one sample. So what is Air Answers test for? Well, according to them, they've designed a testing menu with the help of indoor air quality professionals. I was not part of that meeting. My goodness, I want to be in the room where it happened. In the future, we'll get there. Anyway, indoor air quality experts that looks for molds, allergens, and fungal pathogens that your customers are looking for. So when we're talking about the molds, we're talking about beta-glucan, beta uh, the different genera, and the mycotoxins, which is great. So I know that lately as professionals, we've been talking about all these different types of testing that you need to do to collect all the different types of mold that are present there. So in this case, we've got <laughs> three of them already just within this one device. Uh, with respect to allergens, we've got dust mites, pollens, pets, and pests. So try saying that three times fast. Pollens, pets, pests, pollens, pets, pests, pollens, pets, pests. I did it. It actually wasn't that hard. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, fungi or mold, aspergillus, mucor, musor. Man, I'm going to get made fun of so hardcore for not being able to pronounce this. And candida. Uh, viruses, we've got the SARS-CoV-2, which unfortunately we've all been around plenty of time now and we're unfortunately well acquainted to this. Other than that, ready to get started using your Air Answers device, yada, yada, yada. They talk about the packaging that's in here. And a instruction sheet with a quick start guide. That's great, great, great. Well, anyway, we've got this guy. So, first and foremost, let's give it the QR code test and see if it actually takes us anywhere, because I cannot tell you how many times I scan a code and it's got a broken link. Oh, snap, it works. It works, it works, it works. Look at that. Look at that. It takes you right to what I assume is what they intended on doing. Uh, da -da -da. We got a quick question already from Bob. Uh, Bob Cully, what is the cost of the unit and how much do they charge to process the samples? Well, Bob, given that this is my first interaction, for lack of a better word, with the device, uh, let's pull up. Here we go. So... Fortunately for you, Bob, I've got all this information readily available at my fingertips, wherever that camera is, thanks to this QR code. So just to give you an indication on what this puppy costs, I don't actually know what the device itself costs. Um, my friends at Air Answers were kind enough to send this one over to me without letting the cat out of the bag to give it a whirl, see how I like it, so on and so forth. Um, this review is just basically pro bono, just so we're clear. There was no expectations, no bias here. Um, love free things, but obviously, as you guys know me by now, I'm not here to sell anybody on something I don't believe in. Hence why we're just doing an unboxing here. The Air Answers testing, just for some inside, Bob's going to be anywhere on the low end from it looks like about $162 
to upwards of $704 for what they call a comprehensive allergen and mold assessment. So let's say uh, round about $150 to $800, Bob. So we got that information in there for anybody that is not watching this live and hearing me talk, you'll see that information there. Nonetheless, QR code took us to where we wanted to go, so super excited about that. Um, let us quickly focus on the product operation update and make sure that we know what we're doing. And I actually already read this, so I know what it says, so we don't have to jump into that. But we have my, one of my favorite parts is actually comparing things and figuring out how one device compares to another. Because after all, I think everybody out there will agree with me. There is no perfect product. There is no one size fits all. This so far, I am very impressed with, and I'm excited to see, but let's see how it compares directly. So when it comes to airflow, um, obviously anybody who's out there who's not a consumer, who is a professional, who has used a spore trap sampling pump, better known as a bioaerosol pump, knows that the airflow we collect these samples at is gonna be 15 liters per minute. That is kind of our gold standard industry standard words, mind blank, 15 liters per minute. That's going to be our flow rate on spore trap samples. Whereas with the air answers device, it actually utilizes a high flow um, or a high volume airflow. So they're actually cooking with gas here, 150 liters a minute. So woo, we are moving quick, 10 times that of the spore trap sample. For those of you who cannot do basic math, uh, particle sizes. So we can capture large particles with the spore traps. As we know, we are collecting spores. Uh, we're also collecting the hyphal fragments, and those can also be uh, reported on quantitatively. Um, particle sizes, when it comes to this bad boy, the air answers is going to be the ultra-fine particle sizes, as they make note of here, that can impact health. Now, we all know, obviously, mold in general can impact health, so uh, it's unfortunately a very touchy subject out there because there's the vast majority of the population that don't really react to mold, or I should say react more at higher concentrations, kind of portion of the population that is much more reactive and susceptible to even lower quantities of mold growth. So in my professional opinion, I'd say the both of these commonly are going to affect health here. Um, but again... That's more of physician conversation, so let's not dive down into that rabbit hole. When it comes to operation, the airflow spore trap is going to be a bit noisier, obtrusive, requires additional training and maintenance, longer setup time. Maybe. Um, it's actually fairly easy. I'm pretty sure I can teach even my most uneducated to this subject matter, let's use a different word. I can teach pretty much any client out there that I have how to use a uh, spore trap sampling pump. So it's not rocket science, it's very easy, especially with the book BioAir pumps that I use. Now when it comes to this device, the operation, silent, portable, easy to operate, one minute setup. That's a bold statement. I'm actually gonna put it to the test and I'm excited to see if it's as easy as they say it is because right now that sounds even easier than the unboxing. So laboratory analysis, um, as many of us probably know, the laboratory analysis when it comes to the spore trap samples, that uses a process called microscopy. And for those of you that don't know what it is, fortunately, I just had a, there it is. All right, so we've got a spore trap cassette right here for anyone that hasn't seen it. And, oh, let's get fancy here. Do we have it? Do we have it? We do. Oh, I always have Make sure you have a big knife handy. Let's go ahead and open up, and not plenty of people do this now. I've not personally done it myself. Let's see. There we go. All right. So when we actually crack open one of these spore trap cassettes, we can see, and I don't know how well we're going to be able to see. Let's, let's give it a whirl. Let's see. Can we get in there? Can we get in there? Maybe. If we get the right angle. Possibly. Anyway, so we've got this sticky membrane that's right here, which, as you can here when I'm touching kind of definitely gives credence to the fact that my finger is sticking to this. It's got a little tacky surface. So this is traditionally how we sample for mold. And let's put this knife away. 
So when we go out and we set up these spore trap sampling pumps, effectively we are setting them for, like I said, a five or a 10 minute interval. Me personally, I use a 10 minute interval. I like to have things run, running as long as humanly possible. So that way we can go ahead and get a more representative, uh, excuse me, more representative data of what's going on in the background. Quick snapshot of some real-time data as far as what's going on. Uh, let's see, H2O disaster. Hey, Josh, this is this designed for the homeowner restoration or remediation professional? All right, so uh, getting to that question, I guess I could have started with that. Um, it actually says, so where is it? Right on their box. Let's go to that guy. The gold standard in indoor air quality testing for mold assessors. So I think that about answers that question. It sounds like it is tarching this video, or if you have a life, on a Thursday night at 8 o'clock. But nonetheless, if you are watching this video, please feel free to check targeted at consumers. Um, that I don't know, but I will say that you can actually fill out a form on their website. Um, I imagine they probably would sell to consumers, but nonetheless, it definitely sounds like this is targeted for indoor air quality or indoor environmental professionals. But um, getting back on topic, I should have known better than to put comments in front of me, knowing knowing that, that it's me here. But anyway, so spore trap samples, most of us know how they work. The spores come in the top of this cassette here, and then they stick on this, and then this gets sent out to a laboratory. They then take this, they put it on an actual uh, microscope slide, and then they actually read what fungal counts are on there. They're looking for the different types of mold that's present, and then they're providing you with a quantitative value on the different genera or genus, which is going to be the groupings or the types of mold, not quite species level, but the overall categories of mold, and they're going to give you a readout on that. So when it comes to their laboratory analysis, um, you, they can use a uh, microscope, like I just said, microscopy, uh, qPCR with it, and then, again, reiterating what I just said, detects the number and species genera of spore subject to human interpretation. So I guess that's the big keyword here, right, is this does require an actual laboratory technician. A laboratory technician is going to need to read this and interpret it, so of course, yes, like anything in life, life, it is open to human error. Now, the laboratory analysis on the air answer side, which I think at this point we could just take this out of the bag, put this off to the side. So this gem and beauty looking guy here, which if you're like me and you've got a modern day router, this kind of looks just like my Linksys a little bit up there. But anyway, um, the laboratory analysis with this, it's unique mold test indicative of active mold growth. So that's what you're just talking about here with respect to the beta glucans and, and other facets of, uh, of mold that it can read. Um, it utilizes qPCR, mold genera panel, uh, airborne mycotoxin lab panel, and then um, kind of one of its claim to fame as well is going to be the allergens. And as we talked about the SARS-CoV-2 uh, testing availability. So definitely much more broad as far as what it can physically read there. Uh, reporting, multiple tests, complex reporting, technical and confusing to end user. When it comes to the spore trap samples, these guys here, eh, wouldn't necessarily say that's entirely true. I will say that unless you know what you're looking at, um, I guess putting a laboratory report of, you know, even one of these samples in front of people and putting, putting that in front of a consumer, <laughs> it's probably going to be a foreign language to them. But within reason, you got a lot of these labs out here. Um, they are providing things like mold scores and things like that just to kind of give some or, or, or lend some assistance to the consumers of the world to be able to read and interpret this port. But after all, unfortunately, with that comes some other bad things where we have too many professionals that are now relying on things like that, where the laboratory is, in essence, interpreting the results that's where I have a problem with it. As indoor environmental professionals, we still, we should be the ones interpreting these results and determining if they're at risk, completely normal, any remediation needs to take place, et cetera, et cetera. We shouldn't necessarily have a lab showing us red, green, blue, red, purple, yellow, run, et cetera, et cetera. Measurements, hidden mold, allergens, and viruses is what this guy is seeing. 
Um, with respect to these, of course, we are reading non-viable dead and living spores caught. Dead and living spores collected are included in the results. Mold could be inactive, can only test for mold. So that's what we know about it. I don't want to beat this up too badly because this still absolutely has its place in society. It's also one of the most cost-effective approaches um, for mold sampling as well. And don't let the words misconstrue. Cost-effective meaning a poor choice. It's not the case. Just like anything else, you have to understand the limitations of these guys, as well as there's going to be some limitations with this guy as well. So uh, getting into everything, let's look at how to actually set this up. So we've got this sheet here is going to be... Did it do scan the QR code and we'll be taken to a form. We'll be asked to provide some contact information. We'll receive a welcome email, et cetera, et cetera, and then create the password. So I'm going to spare you guys all of that, um, as well as all of my private information for my sake, but inserting the cartridge. So let's see what we got. So I'm going to kind of mimic this up here because ultimately I would like to take this on its maiden voyage and I want to make sure that we set this puppy up properly so let's pull out the big crazy man knife again and go ahead and remove what do we got there we go that's a little bit better view i'm gonna go ahead and remove what they call the blue cover blue cover huh. nice and easy unsnap the blue cover from the bottom of the device and insert a cartridge into the opening so here's going to be our cartridges here. Let's see what we got. It looks like these are super sealed inside of here. Do we have any blue gloves? We don't have any blue gloves. No, it's like you'd think I prepared for this video, but I didn't. So we're going to be extra, extra careful. Come on. Come on. I need directions on opening this thing here. Golly gee willikers. All right, there we go. Just takes a little bit of strength. All right, so let's see if we can get a good enough shot here. So we've got the two metal rods or electrodes going on right here. Not sure how well of a picture we're going to get. Let's see here. Is this, eh, that should be good enough for you guys to kind of see what's going on. So we're going to take this guy, and it looks like it only goes in in one direction, which is a beautiful thing. And snaps down into place. So that was actually pretty easy thus far. Let's take you. We'll throw you away. Let's put big butcher block John knife over there. All right. Powering on device. Excuse me. Powering on the device. Place the device in the desired location. So let's go ahead and take our blue cap. Does it say to put the blue cap back on? It doesn't. In the desired location. But it doesn't say to... I'm just curious. Can I put the blue cap back on if I wanted to? It looks like I can, but because it doesn't say to put it on, I'm not going to put it on. I'm going to set it off to the side. And we're going to set it up here. We've got our AC adapter. Powering on the device. Place the device on the desired area and plug it in using the provided power cord. The light ring status indicator at the bottom of the device will flash yellow and green until it turns solid green, indicating that this is now sampling the air. All right, so let's look at the other information that I know is relevant here, which is going to be this and let's go ahead and crank that air down. It's getting a little warm in here. Da -da. And there we go. All right, T. Toss you in here. All right, so this is the sheet that they provided us. I'm going to actually probably read some of it aloud. That way you guys are, excuse me, on the same page here. Uh, your air answers your air answers indoor air quality bioaerosol sampling device comes equipped with a built-in timer designed to shut off the device after five days of total runtime. So that's another thing that I absolutely love about this is traditionally with 
mold sampling with with the exception of uh uh Anderson Anderson pumps I believe is the name I've never used one but I've heard great things about them uh, I think it's the Anderson pumps those are obviously um, able to run longer periods of time you can also culture the samples collected from there um, this is going to be wonderful in the sense that for me transitioning to a five to ten minute sample here um, you know we're transitioning to a five day sample which in my eyes I, I doesn't really get much more representative than that compared to maybe taking a air filter from an AC system after, you know, a 30 day runtime. But for the sake of ease here, this is definitely something that I think is going to fit a nice purpose. Um, but anyway, let's get back to reading this. So five day total runtime. Um, this total run time can result from one five day continuous run, uh, as would be used for sampling of airborne allergens or be the result of several shorter runs. So in theory, yes, you could actually run it one day in my office, you could run it one day in the master bedroom, and then another day in the kitchen, etc. So that's actually a beautiful thing for, again, looking to get more of a kind of a cumulative or representative sample of a property as a whole. For example, if the device is run to test for airborne mold at five separate locations for one day each, exactly, that's what we just talked about, and is not reset as recommended between each run, and then the end of the fifth one-day run, the timer will reach its five-day limit, and the light ring status indicator near the bottom of the device will be flashing green, indicating that the device has shut down. So to avoid the device reaching its five-day run, excuse me, five-day total run time limit and shutting off unexpectedly, they recommend the following. Okay, so this is where we get into it, and this is going to be after performing this step if the light thing... So the thing that they do have here at the bottom, they do have a support email address, which is a beautiful thing, support at airanswers.com. Um, you guys can look forward to hearing from me, I'm sure, if I run into any snags or issues here. So let's go ahead and get this puppy set up and see how she does. So we've got this cord here. We're going to plug it into here, and we've got the other half, which is going to be right here. And let's see, let us make sure we're following the directions since I, for one, don't follow directions or take direction well. So running the device, we already made sure, uh, leaving the device running undisturbed for five days for the comprehensive mold and allergen panel. Uh, da, da, da. Not all tests require the five day runtime. So that's another thing. So let's, let's, uh, do we want to talk about that? I guess we could briefly talk about it. So what Air Answers has is Air Answers has a couple of different types of tests, which let's go ahead and pull it back up and I'll kind of go over some of it with you guys. Um, bum, bum. There we go. All right. So now I've got it in front of me on the sheet. Okay. So when it comes to the different types of sampling that this device can do, we've got, um, oh, actually, here you go, Bobby. So the price, or excuse me, Bob, my apologies. The price of the Air Answers air sampling system is $499 even. Um, so that's this guy. That's what we're looking at right here. This is going to be $499 even retail price, um, a 10-pack of cartridges, which are going to be these guys here, which you just saw me open, a 10-pack is going to be $200, so it looks like that cost is going to break down to, what, $20, $20 a piece for these samples. Um, so when it comes to the actual laboratory analysis, the mold testing, so they've got a mold test for beta-glucan, which is going to be a 24-hour, one-day sampling period. Um, that's going to be about $162. I'm not, just for the sake of time here, I'm not going to read out every price, but let's kind of go through some of the excuse me, geez, uh, the different types of sampling that they have. They've got the mold test beta-glucan, which we just spoke of. Um, the mold test beta-glucan, a one-hour sampling period. So uh, maybe if you're there at the time of and you want to be able to collect a sample before you leave for the day, maybe this is the more optimal choice for you. Um, we've got the mold genera assessment. I think we probably know what most of this means here, but uh, this can highlight toxic to some individuals if they found they require immediate remediation. So this is going to read uh, Stachybotrys, Fusarium, 
Um, your chitomium, penicillin, and some different other variations includes over 300 species of mold. So this is going to be, you know, dive deep into the, the genera assessment. Um, just for comparison's sake, this is around a $270 assessment, just so you guys know. Uh, they also do have a mycotoxin assessment here, a mycotoxin panel. And this is going to test for four different mycotoxins. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this right here. I'm going to share this in the description just to make life easier for everyone that actually wants to kind of maybe read along after the fact and see everything that they have. Um, they've also got a total mold panel, a mold speciation assessment, which it doesn't look like it's out yet, but it's coming soon. Um, pricing, everything there is going to be to be determined uh, as well as turnaround times. So an allergen panel, this is going to be something that would be a five-day run time. So this is also going to require a five-day turnaround time. So basically, you're looking at soup to nuts, about five days of sampling, let's say uh, an additional day to get it to and from the location, uh, or excuse me, to and from, from your house to the laboratory. Um, and then it's going to be looking at five additional days for the actual uh, processing time for the lab to do what they do. Um, we've got our allergens and beta-glucan, the mold panel, um, they do note nearly $50 in savings per sample, um, five days, five days on there for turnaround time as well. And then ultimately what I think I'm going to be using quite a bit of, which uh, would be the comprehensive allergen and mold assessment. For those of you keeping track, they quote $120 in savings. So this one, since this is the one that I think probably a lot of people also be interested in, comprehensive allergen and mold assessment $704 is their retail price. It's a five-day sampling period, and it has a five-day turnaround time. And a quick overview of what it is, if you're looking for a total reading of indoor air, of an indoor air environment, this comprehensive allergen and mold assessment is your answer. This panel detects allergens, beta-glucan, and mycotoxins. And again, they reiterate that it's about $120 worth of savings. And last but not least, if you were interested in doing the virus testing for SARS-CoV-2, uh, it's about $180 assessment. That requires a two-day runtime. Nope, I lied. A three-day runtime and a 48-hour turnaround time on reporting from when the lab receives it. I don't have to tell you what type of assessment that is there, or panel, I should say, because we just said it. SARS-CoV-2. Uh, regarding the, let's see, we got a question here from Bob again. Uh, regarding the five-day runtime, how many square feet does the manufacturer say it covers? So, oh, actually, Bob, I don't know. So that's a good question. Now, here's the best way that I will attempt to answer that for you, not being affiliated with Air Answers, but what I think they're going to say, is because this device does run at 150 liters per minute through its technology that they use, um, it is going to pull in uh, and pass a lot of air across the sampling media. So if you were going to just do maybe one sample, I'd say you probably want to do it somewhere in the vicinity of the air return, which is going to be a little bit more representative of the property as a whole. Now, again, if you've got a property that's got multiple AC systems, two or more, then obviously I'd probably recommend doing um, either one of these back-to-back -back in, in both zones or simply put just taking – two of these and running one in each zone for the one day, one hour, five day period. Um, ignorantly, again, I'm going to say uh, one of these, they're talking about if you want to test five different rooms, they were basically talking about taking it and setting it up one day in one room, one day in another room, one day in another room. So I would probably approximate that they're going to say it's good for an average, maybe 15 by 15 room. But with that said, I mean, everything is going to come down to air currents, right? If you have this sitting inside of a room that has little to no air circulation, it's probably not going to be real representative of even that room as a whole if you're not getting air to come across this uh, surface media. And equally, if you put it in a room that has high traffic area, that's probably going to be a lot more representative of what you're carrying in from A, the outdoors, B, the basement if you're up north, obviously the attic if you crawl through the attic. But ultimately, I'm going to wait for Rachel to chime in on here. So, um, Bob, that is a great question for Rachel. All right. So, Rachel, if you are seeing this here, Bob's got a question about square footage. Um, excellent question that, unfortunately, I don't know anything about. 
Um, but as far as setting this puppy up, since, I mean, at this point, we're pretty much nearing the end of this. I just mainly just wanted to do an unboxing. What I plan on doing with everyone here is at a later date, once I do get the results back from this, I'd love to go ahead and review it, see exactly what we found, and um, kind of a little bit more discussion on what their lab reports look like. If indeed it is, what's the word they use? Do, 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 do. complex reporting is the other one so let's make sure this one isn't complex reporting because then that would be some pot kettle action but i don't think so i really don't i really don't think they would have sent me one of these if they didn't think they had a good product so let's keep that in mind as well um but anywho for the sake of everyone here including myself i want to get this device going so Running the device, make sure you leave the device undisturbed for five full days. We already did talk about this, so let's place it in the desired location area, and let's plug it in using the provided power cord. The light status ring indicator at the, 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 the bottom of the device will flash yellow and green until it turns solid green. And then that's when it indicates that we're running. So solid green color, that indicates that the run was completed with the limited on board timer. So it does sound like they said it's got a built-in five-day timer. Uh, so this is just basically going to run and do its thing. So let's actually, you know what, let's get it started right here. We're going to plug it in for everybody. What's the good angle? Is that a good angle? Let's go with this angle. Let's set this puppy up here. I know we've got the light. Where's going to be our light so we can see? Let's go ahead and plug it in. We can unplug you. You can go back in later. All right. We are plugged in. Oh, there we go. So there's our light at the bottom. So as we see, it was flashing green and orange, and now we've got a solid green. Holy mother of crap. Wow. So, they were not joking about that electrokinetic. I don't know if you guys can see this. That's kind of cool. So basically, there's a lot of static electricity going on over here. So, woo! That is interesting. All right, so don't freak out if and when you guys do pick up one of these guys and you plug it in and your hair starts standing up right around it because... Uh, I assume that's normal. All right. But that's it. I mean, that's it. There's, there's there's not much to it. It's it's on. It's running. It's that's it. So I I I guess that concludes our segment here. Um, I'm just gonna turn it over to my four people watching for you. Huh? Huh? It's better than three. Um, if anyone has any closing questions here, I'll attempt to butcher an answer for you. Otherwise, um, I'm going to reach out to Rachel to get some of these questions answered for you guys. And let's see, I think that about sums it up. I'll give it another minute or so here. But other than that, um, very easy setup. I mean, it obviously took a lot longer than a minute because of this chatty patty itis that I've got. So um, had I not been talking through this process, this is literally like they say about a one minute setup. Very easy to do, very easy to use. And as you can see here, uh, let's see if we can get a better camera angle for you guys. I think that should probably do one. That might be a better angle. You guys should be able to see the green light on there. But yeah, so this puppy's just lit up green right there at the bottom, solid and ready to go. But otherwise, I appreciate everyone jumping in, taking up some of your time with me this evening to spend and, and watch and support everything I'm doing. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure many of you know by now, but for those of you that don't know, um, one of my goals or my primary goals with this channel is to get out education to anybody that'll listen, simply put. Um, it is, of course, targeted at both consumers and professionals, but whether you're an insurance agent, whether you're a farmer in Texas, I mean, quite frankly, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I want to get good education, excuse me, good 
environmental education out there for anybody that, like I said, is willing to listen to it. That's the goal of this channel. I hope to do some bigger things than YouTube at some point, but for right now, this is the platform that I chose, and I appreciate everyone coming on and supporting me all. Ooh, we got five. We got all five of you. Five of you. I did see it was up to seven a few minutes ago, so we're not going to deduct from that. But nonetheless, if you found value in this video, please, I would love for you guys to hit that big thumbs up button. Did we get any likes here? I don't know if we, we got three likes out of this video, so let's up that number and try and bring that up. Other than that, um, if you want to see more videos like this, whether live or pre-recorded video segments, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always with my videos, if you guys know a few good candidates that could benefit from seeing videos like this, please go ahead and share this video to them. I make sure that everything that I put up is for public consumption, so there's no hidden backdoor behind the scenes stuff. So please hit that share button, copy the link, send that over to a friend or family member that needs it. And otherwise, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.